no big deal. We're just inside the rhino habitat doing our thing. Today, we are looking at how compost is created from waste. We are in rhino habitat. And we're here with the rhinos because they do create a lot of waste. This is rhino poop. Uh, they call it a midden. That's a pile of poop. And uh, we have to be a little bit careful where, where we're at right at the moment because the rhinos are back there, but not a problem. We're gonna scoop it up with a big vehicle. So we gotta, we gotta back up right now. Not only are these dung bins extremely useful for us because it puts all of the poop in one place so that we can scoop it up, but it's also a great insight into rhino social behavior. They smell this poop to communicate with each other. But we're looking for piles of poop. Here at the zoo, 85% of the waste is turned back into compost. Good, rich soil. So we thought we'd start with the rhinos. But I think it's important to understand that the compost pile that we're going to make here at the zoo contains a lot of other things too. The bedding and hay from the habitats goes in, as do the sticks and leaves from landscaping. Leftover food goes in, as does a huge proportion of the waste from the dining facilities. Everything's 100% compostable, and I mean everything from displays to to go items, placement items. They can identify which is which and they can also learn what's compostable and what's not compostable. And if you're wondering about say this cup or the forks and knives and spoons, they're not made out of plastic. They're 100% compostable as well, everything is. But let's get back to the poop. Rhinos are only one of the animals here that contribute. The largest contribution in this category goes to the elephants. This is all the elephant uh, from today. This is strictly elephant from just today. Estimated it's about 5,000 pounds of stuff. 80% uh, of that is gonna be manure, and then the other 20% is gonna be hay. Wow, well, let's look at it. Each elephant's gonna eat about 200 to 300 pounds of food a day. Okay, just grab it. Just okay. grab it. All right, all right. It's not carnivore poop, it's all hay. Um, so they digest about 60% of what they eat um, and the other 40% comes out looking just like this. So it actually makes a great fertilizer. Um, yeah, it doesn't even feel like poop. No. It feels kind of like I'm like wet hay. Yeah, they actually make an elephant dung tea. Oh, it does smell. And it does. Bit. It's yeah. it's good for the lungs though. It's very earthy, oh, you know? Really? Is there one pile that you're going to put it in to the, start it? Yeah, the one that George is flipping over right now, that's typically the one that we dump all of our all of our fresh stuff there. Is it just you put it all together or is there like a real science to it? The beauty of composting is you can hardly go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, people do it at home and do different techniques, but if you just take organic material, put it on the ground and never touch it again, it's going to turn into compost eventually. Kind of turn it's back to break dirt, down. Like what people yeah. think of as dirt. Yes. Yeah. Here, you know, we want to do it in the quickest, the most efficient uh -huh. way we can. So here's the science. Roughly, he's trying to mix in about three to four times as much dry organic matter, like hay and leaves, as he does the richer, nitrogen-heavy type of matter, like the feces. And for the best pile, he's going for a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 30 to 1. But of course, he doesn't process all 2,000 tons of this finished compost that they make every year just by hand. We've got some equipment. It's low tech. We're low tech. But that piece of equipment right there, you know, is the star of the show because it does all that work. So he hopped in the front end loader to show us how it works. The main pile gets mixed up and he puts it into the first windrow. Basically, it's a long pile that's 6 to 10 feet tall. This creates an amazing habitat for the many bacteria and fungi that do the work of breaking everything down. This is decomposition in action. The size of the pile and the breakdown that's happening increases the temperature inside the pile, and the whole thing starts to steam. It's pretty neat to see on a cold morning like this. That increase in temperature then kills any of the seeds and pathogens that may be in the pile. But that breakdown in sanitation is only happening in the middle of the pile, so it has to be turned. Again, the front end loader. And the way he does this is he takes the windrow and turns it into a second windrow. This process is repeated regularly until that temperature peak stops. Using these thermometers helps determine when the process is done. 140 degrees. Finally, it's tested for any harmful chemicals, harmful pathogens, and it's then aged a little bit more before it's used by the horticulture team. That's beauty right there. Yeah. You know you got the good stuff when a worm is there. <laughs> I didn't put that worm there. Though. I know, I saw it. <laughs> to grow plants. Transplant bamboo in here. Here it is. 
So this is the end result of the whole process of composting. This is nice, rich dirt full of nitrogen. And then they use it to grow all these plants like the bamboo, and then the animals eat it. It's just a giant cycle. I hope you learned something about some of the green practices here at the zoo. And my question for you is, how can you take what you learned here and incorporate it into things that are done at your school or at home? Pretty cool. All right, we'll see you in another video.